Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Live Daily Podcast. I'm the host, Nina, and today I have a conversation with Alexandre Beretta. In every episode of the podcast, I interview a guest on one of their passions. Today with Alexandre, we will talk about his passion for art and for sport. More specifically, Alexandre is a muralist, and he also came out with the technique rollerblading painting, which means that he paints on the floor while rollerblading. In this episode, you'll also hear us talk about street art and what it means to be a street artist, how can one become a street artist, the legal aspects of street art, and much more. So keep on listening. So hello, Alexandre, how are you doing? Very good, thank you. And you? Very good, thank you. I'm very happy to be doing this episode. And I want to thank you, of course, for agreeing to uh, be on the podcast. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Can we start with just an introduction of yourself? So, for example, where you come from, where you live, how old you are, anything you want to say um, to introduce yes, yourself? Uh, yeah, okay. So I'm 27 years old now. I live in Lyon in France. Um, I'm French and Irish. I'm a street artist, so painting worldwide and uh, also um, attending worldwide competitions in uh, extreme rollerblading and extreme ice cross uh, downhill competitions. Yeah, you do a lot of things. So there will be a lot of content for this episode. We're going to focus more on the art aspect. So we're going to talk about your job as a muralist and also roller painting. But first, I think it would be nice to start with your passion for art in general. So um, can you tell us how your passion for art started? It was quite late, actually. When I was in, uh, in secondary school, I had a friend who was passionate for drawing. I became friend with this guy and so we we were drawing together and um, I just drew for pleasure. And when I was in high school, I was uh, aiming for um, a science, science studies actually. At the end, I changed my mind in the last minute and I said, okay, I, I, uh, I want to, to paint for a living and so I had these studies in a visual communication school in Paris. It didn't uh, suit myself. Um, I was not very happy with it. So I changed again for uh, an illustration school in Lyon. And um, then I changed my, my mind again and I wanted to be a muralist. So I had this three years study for uh, mural paintings, 3D paintings, and then I'm I got my diploma in 2017, and then from now I paint uh, worldwide murals. All right, so then you did all your studies in, in France, right, if I understand correctly? Yes, Okay. exactly. And in terms of your educational background then, so you started with visual communication, right, in Paris? Mm -hmm. That didn't suit yeah. you? And then afterwards, how? what did you, what did you want to do? Then I wanted to be a, an illustrator. Actually, I changed my mind in uh, in in the studies because um, you can send an illustration in uh, in thirty seconds by email uh, anywhere in the world now, mm -hmm. uh, whereas uh, you can you can't just send a wall. You have to be in front of it to paint it. So this is what I like about it: is uh, to travel around because um, I'm really passionate about traveling and meeting new people so everything comes along and uh, this is why i wanted to be a muralist actually okay so then uh, if i'm not wrong you entered the international school of moral art in lyon which uh, i yeah. think is the only school in europe right of uh, mural art it's the only superior school specialized in mural art Mm -hmm. And um, actually, unfortunately, it's closed now uh, because we don't have enough uh, students, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so they closed the school, I think, two years ago, or maybe one year ago. 
So okay. unfortunately, it's not. Yeah, it's not open anymore. It's not open. Yeah. So, how did you discover actually more odd? Because as you were saying, there's not a lot of students. There's not a lot of schools. So I'm curious to know then how you discovered that kind of art, since I think a lot of people don't know about it. So that's my first question. And afterwards, actually, yeah. if you can explain also what it is for people who might be listening and don't know. So actually, street art is basically art in the street, as you can imagine. What you can find in street art is many, 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 many things. Actually, dance can be street art. Uh, music can be street art. Stencil can be street art. Uh, mural art can be street art. And I'm in this particular branch of street art, which is called muralism, which is um, yeah, painting on walls. Okay. And the difference then basically between street art and mural art is pretty small right uh, is it it's it's basically that i do it for a living so i am commissioned to paint uh, walls well we can we can imagine that street art is like kind of a house and um in this house you have different different rooms and in this in the, in one room you can have like painting in another room you can have uh, music in another room you have photography for example and in the in this specific room of painting you have um, different decoration if i can say which could mean like the stencil uh, different mediums you know so stencil painting graffiti and everything and in this same category you can have a stencil which are legal legal or illegal so um, you have a lot of boxing to boxes actually okay yeah i think that's very interesting because what i understand also is that street art is like a general term to talk about just art in the street and mural yeah. art for example is one specific category that is kind of yeah. part of street art then if i'm exactly yeah okay yeah that, that's interesting because uh me for example when i think of street art i automatically think of um well mural art or like art on on walls and stuff so yeah it's interesting to 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 see that actually street art is much more than that like you can say it can be dancing in the streets and yeah. stuff like this so it's nice to have this different perspective that i personally didn't really think about and mm -hmm. you talked about also um doing it legally or illegally how did you deal with this as an artist for example because um if i think of mural art so as part of street art there are sometimes uh, a lot of stereotypes around this type of art and um talking referring to it being for example illegal and stuff like this so how did you how was it for you and how did you approach this well in everybody's mind street art is illegal because Um, it was born as illegal, mm -hmm. so it's completely normal. Thing is that now the things are changing, and this is why we are kind of professionalizing it. Yeah, I'm trying to change people's mind and people people's uh, thinking about it. Um, you don't have to be illegal to do street art; like you can do it per perfectly the, in the good way of doing it not good way but like legal way basically or y yeah legal yeah. way actually but yeah historically it is it is illegal and old old way of doing it was completely illegal and just for the fun actually mm -hmm. uh, for the fun and for territory claiming You know, mm -hmm. in 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 New York, uh, with a underground and everything, and um, now it's it's becoming more popular and changing in a way to bring more color in the city and uh, and decorate buildings. So I think I I like this aspect better. Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. Yeah, we will talk a bit later about um, how you work, actually, because you're contacted sometimes by organizations. And that also is part of the legal aspect of this conversation, I guess. But before we move on with your education, I was wondering what... Okay, that might seem like a very maybe vague question, but what they taught you actually at the mural school, like if you could um, maybe talk about one lesson or one message that was particularly important for you that they taught you there that you wouldn't have learned if you didn't go there, basically. That was a really, really, really nice studies uh, because we learned all about the, the technique, actually, what kind of paint you put on on what kind of, of wall. It depends on, on on your wall. If you had a stone wall, you have a particular paint to put on. If you have a concrete wall, you have to put another type of paint. So this was really interesting. We learned about perspective, architecture, uh, how to create a, what we call a trompe l'oeil. So what, uh, what makes a, a 3D painting, like a 2D, 2D painting, which is uh, basically playing with your eye and playing with your uh, environment. The thing of these studies was to be paid for your art and if people pay for it, it, have, it has to last in the time. So you have to put the right amount of paint and the right paint on the right support actually so this mm -hmm. this is what we learned basically you learn yeah, to work with your environment then yeah yeah okay yeah it really makes me think of also urban studies for example where you learn about public spaces and um these type of things like it's not just you go there and you do your art we also have yeah. to think about uh like you said the support um in which environment you do it so that's actually mm. also very interesting aspect and once you finished in your education at this school what was your what was your goal or what was the next step for you the next step is still unaccomplished actually is to live to live from my paintings it's it's really hard uh, in these days to do it but actually my my dream and a professional goal would be to have a mural in every country, mm -hmm. a mural painted in every country. As I said earlier, I really like to travel and uh, yeah, the goal would be to, to travel and paint around whether it's my own world, my own creation or what I like best is to involve the community, the local community, sorry. So um, I like to involve children or people who want to yeah, to learn how to paint and I just teach them how to paint and we have a, what we call a, a collaborative wall painted mm -hmm. and uh, which is uh, what I like best. Okay, so now you were talking about traveling, but do you also do this so in France? Because we're going to come back to how you work actually. Yeah. So what yeah. type of works do you do? Do you get contacted by organizations? Do you work independently? Like how, how does it work? Yeah, I'm, I'm actually, my work is like maybe 95% of my time uh, uh, trying to find clients and maybe 5% of the time is a painting. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to find clients everywhere, anytime. I, it's like if I am having a, uh, having a drink with friends in a bar and I see like, I don't know, uh, a white wall, I, I'm going to ask for the manager and ask if he's interested in a mural. Or if I walk on a Sunday in the street and I see iron curtains closed from the shops and I'm, I'm seeing like it's completely gray or completely tagged. Uh, I'm just waiting for the shop to open and ask if they want uh, a nice, uh, a nicer uh, iron curtain. Um, mm -hmm. if I'm on a personal uh, travel holidays abroad, uh, I'm just trying to find organizations to, to paint with the kids, uh, contacting school, uh, everything actually, every, everywhere where there is a wall, I can have a potential work on it. So it's actually a lot of 
potential work, but um, have to yeah ask for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's it was nice to have a few examples of of what you can you can you can do. Then I'm sure you do a lot of different things also. So it's not always the same type of of work. And if yeah. you don't mind me asking, is your job as a muralist then your main source of income? It is. It is the only one actually I have. It's just enough to make me survive actually. So yeah, just enough to survive, pay pay the bills, and uh, and that's it. But uh, I hope I'll have more uh, murals commissioned in the future and have more fun actually. <laughs> Yeah, and I can imagine with COVID also yeah. that doesn't help. Yeah, exactly. In general, mm -hmm. so that was then a good understanding of your job as a muralist. But as you said, I think when you introduce yourself, you also like sports, and they play a big role in your life. Can you just tell us quickly again which sports you practice? I am involved in two worldwide competitions. Uh, extreme rollerblading in summertime and extreme ice cross downhill in winter time it's actually basically the exact same sport but only the, the way of doing it is changing it's kind of a race with big obstacles like uh, gaps uh, jumps uh, needle turns and everything but with absolutely no no freestyle no freestyle in it. It's just a race from A to B. And yeah, I represent Ireland in these two sports. I was ninth in the world ranking in the rollerblading in 2018, hoping to aim for Winter Olympics in 2026 in Milano, Cortina, for uh, ice cross. And then do you go practice in Ireland or do you do it in France? No, I, I practice everything in France. Um, I'm actually my own team. Okay. Uh, I am the only Irish rider in these two sports. Yeah, the future, I hope, in the future, I hope there will be more uh, riders and uh, we can create a team and a federation and to be more renowned in Ireland because basically nobody knows me in Ireland. So I'm trying to get myself known by the, the sports people over there. It's quite difficult because it's been a long time I didn't go there now mm -hmm. with COVID, obviously. Okay, so it's not a sport that's very common then, at least over there. Oh, no, 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 it's it's really not popular. Even in the world, it's actually kind of a growing sports, emerging sports. So it's really not um, not known, actually, not yet. Okay, okay. So then, yeah, you like sports and you like art. And one day you decided to combine the two and create rollerblading painting. So uh, how did you have this idea? Like, how did it happen that you, one day you just woke up and you thought, uh, I'm going to try it? Uh, actually, no, actually, it was quite of a, a long process. It's actually when I was in my studies in the last year, we were given a giant workshop to paint on our projects. It was so huge, I could rollerblade in it. So often I took my rollerblades, my skates, and I just rollerblade into it. Just sometimes I just did my paintings when I had my skate on my feet. So I was, I have my, my skates on my feet and I was painting standing up, like traditional painting yeah. with my hand. And so I had this idea to, yeah, to kind of uh, paint a mural with my skates on my feet, but painting with my brush on my hand. And I wanted to find a really long wall and paint abstract lines. So skate in front of it and paint maybe abstract line or figurative things. Uh, but using my hand as a brush, uh, using my hand with a brush, sorry. And then actually I was in, um, in the Philippines for an international art residency in 2017. And I had this opportunity to actually pour paint on the ground and just skate on it. It was first for the fun. I was like, maybe I can just try something. 
and then it was um something something appeared like kind of a, a silhouette of a, of a portrait and i was like oh maybe i can try a portrait and so i try, i painted this first portrait with my feet and it, it actually blew everyone away everyone's mind of a pair so i was like maybe i have something and i had some um uh, yeah a few few searches on the internet and i found nobody did this before so well actually to be to be to be right people did it but um in the abstract way mm -hmm. nobody is doing it in the figurative way so i was like maybe i have something to do with this and uh, uh yeah i tried actually different portraits uh, and figurative paintings and um, this is how it came from yeah that's a very interesting idea I had never heard about it before and I think it's really impressive like I'm trying to imagine also what it would look like but of course people can also check so you have pictures maybe on your website or yeah I have pictures on our yeah. website and Instagram and everything so okay uh, yeah you can okay. check out We'll mention then your Instagram YouTube video, yeah. Mm -hmm. Then okay, we'll mention them at the end of the podcast, then so that at the end of the episode, so that people can go see what it looks like. Of course, it's easier to have an idea. Yeah, that might seem like kind of a naive question. I don't know, but how if you were so used to paint with your hands, like how did you, I don't know, manage to actually do it with um with the skates? Yeah, how is it to, to change from one way of doing with your hands to suddenly with the roller and actually manage to do figures? Was that complicated or it kind of just came as an instinct almost? To be honest, it, it, it came like it came. It's, uh, I can't really explain it. Uh, basically, I, I am more um, at ease with skates on my feet than with my uh, own shoes, actually. I really like the feeling to be on the skates. Actually, to prepare um, a performance uh, of a rollerblading painting, I have to prepare myself. So basically, I have an image. First, I have a picture. Then I take a sketchbook and with my hand, I draw it. Uh, I sketch the image I have. And from this sketch, I, I'm doing with my hand. I'm transferring it to my brain and then I'm trying to imagine it with my feet. And then when I'm on the ground to rollerblading it, I'm having this, this, I don't know, this image in my mind that I drew in my hand, but I transplant to my feet. And then uh, I don't know, it, it just comes like this. So mm -hmm. that's, I don't know how to explain it really. So. <laughs> yeah no I mean I guess uh, like you said it just happened and I think it's a good message also for people listening that sometimes if you have different passions that you can try to combine them together also that's a way to be creative and there's no rules of what you should follow that you can just try sometimes uh, mixing things and then yeah it can result in impressive stuff and so that's yeah. then you call it roller painting, right? This technique. Ro roller blading painting, yeah. Roller blading painting. Okay. Okay, great. So that then is also a topic that I thought was very interesting since, like you said, you're the only one who does it in a non abstract way, as you said. So again, I will. Uh, sorry, yep. Yeah. I'm the only one as far as I could uh, search for it, actually. Maybe other people doing it, but I don't know about it so mm -hmm. yeah okay maybe maybe people does it uh but i don't i'm not aware about it well yeah. if anyone listening to this podcast knows someone <laughs> who does it then uh, <laughs> let us know but contact yeah, me yeah <laughs> yeah i personally never never heard about it but uh i think it's very it's very interesting and in in general then how what are the themes that are very recurrent in your art so some subjects you like to address are there any even or not necessarily well actually it depends on the on the mural i have to work on usually when people commissioned a mural 
they have a precise line of what they want. We have a precise picture of what they want. And so I'm not really creative about it. But like uh, it happened only once that people have a, a white wall and they pay for me to paint what I want. This is uh, really rare. But usually when I'm in a, in a festival, a street art festival or painting um, for myself, I like to always have an important message in these paintings. So when I, when I paint for myself, usually I have a message in it, an important message in it. And um, usually it's based on uh, environment. But it, it can be inspired by the, the news, by uh, people I meet, by a story I heard of. Basically, I'm inspired by everything, actually. I'm, I'm, I'm really curious about everything. And so everything can inspire me, actually. It depends on, on the moment. All right. Yeah, because when we prepared the episode also, you mentioned something that I found interesting, is that you sometimes use history or like mythology for example you had for example an art work where it was a statue that you modernized so could you tell us maybe a bit about that also yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, what i like in this moment of my life is to bring culture to people like forgotten culture yeah i like to bring cultures out of museum and uh and put it in the street in a more modern way, actually, yeah. So I like to paint a sculpture in black and white for the past and using a colorful background, more graphic background to modernize it and uh, have a confrontation between past and present and future. Yeah, I like to do this. Yeah, that's an interesting concept also to use older artworks such as like the statues, for example, yeah, and then yeah. putting them into more uh, modern art. And like you said, street art in general, like neural art is new, it's emerging. So it makes even more sense to, how can I say, like to, um, to use such type of art to modernize other artworks. It's a bit of a long sentence, but I think uh, you know what I mean. Yeah, 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 mm -hmm. that's it. And you also talked about your travels. So just to end this episode, you mentioned you want to do a mural art in every country, right? That's one of your goals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, so you already did it in how many countries? So far, it's 25 now. Mm -hmm. And not in every continent. I never, pay, never painted yet in Africa, but I really w want to, really will to, to paint there. I have quite exotic countries such as uh, Philippines, US, uh, Mexico, Colombia, Greece, uh, Finland. Uh, yeah, the, yeah, the goal of painting a mural in every country is, uh, is an excuse to actually travel and meet other people, mm -hmm. uh, which is something I'm, I'm really passionate about. So. As I told earlier, I'm really interested in going in a country, for example. Uh, I don't know. I would love to go in, I don't know, Senegal and travel with a school there to have a, a mural to, uh, to paint with uh, the children over there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So for you, it's very important for then to work with the communities in every country and yeah, do an art sure. that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, sharing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right. Yeah, yeah, I, I very much understand. That's what I like also about this podcast is to have conversations with people from different parts of the world. It's always uh, very interesting. And just to finish this uh, episode then, is there um, some last word you would like to say or some message maybe for other people listening to you who are also interested in so mural art or street art in, in general but mm, yeah is there anything you would like to to say maybe um, to people having the same passions as you keep up the good work <laughs> be be inspired and keep actually keep faith uh, 
it's not it's not easy uh, it's really not easy as long as you believe in it you you can do great things so i think you just have to work hard and uh, not give up yeah. yeah work hard and not give up exactly Mm -hmm. all right well thank you very much and we said we were gonna mention your account so if you want to mention maybe your instagram or website so people can find some of your artworks and follow you also you can find me on uh, instagram with beretta.alex.art b-e-r-e-t-t-a same on facebook and so website is www.alex-muralpainter.com Okay, great. And so I will share also some content on the Instagram of the podcast, which is the live they live underscore podcast. Yeah, if people then want to follow you and see what you will do next, I don't know if you already have projects in mind or not really right now. I have a lot of projects in mind, but like commissioned painting i don't have not i don't have yet so yeah as i told you i'm every day searching for it and uh, if you listen to this podcast and you have a wall to paint don't hesitate don't hesitate to contact me <laughs> uh, if uh, even uh, even more if you're abroad uh, i would be really interested in painting uh, a wall for you yeah that's very really nice that you can actually uh yeah your job allows you to travel anywhere you you want that's uh, really cool i think and so yeah. thank you again for agreeing to be on the podcast it was very interesting to hear about this specific type of art it's the first episode about mural art um street art rather painting yeah so it was really nice to to hear about your your passion so again thank you very much well it was a real pleasure thank you for your time actually really yeah thank you for your time also and thank you for everyone who was listening to this episode don't hesitate to give me any feedback on instagram youtube any platform and i will see you soon for a next episode thank thank you bye